This is an introduction and overview of the Artisan Electronic Instruments Otava Desktop Performance Synthesizer. The Otava Synthesizer has two oscillators, an advanced CMOS digital ring modulator, a noise source with pitch and volume controls, has a four-pole low-pass filter with two modulation sources, a VCA, four ADSRs with delay and hold features, which are loopable, and four LFOs with eight waveforms, two different types of random waveforms, and rate modulation. The LFOs can also be set to synchronize or once trigger with the keyboard, allowing you to do other AR type features. Everything on the front panel can be recorded and stored as patches, um, and you can also Assign those patches so that you can quickly access them across the bottom panel here. That is covered in previous demos. I'm going to go through the various waveforms in the oscillators, move on to the filters, and then talk about the modulation as well. So you have your standard waveforms. You have a the filter's wide open, no resonance right now. You're listening to a saw waveform. I can adjust that smoothly from saw. The triangle and it's showing you it's 58% saw right there, 75, 80% triangle, and there's our triangle waveform. Can also continue moving the knob on and it goes into pulse width modulation, so 50%, right down to the point where you can't hear it. Waveforms are modulatable. They have a source that you select here. In this case, we're using LFO1. That's your standard PWM modulation. You can also do modulation on the saw to triangle wave. Let's go back to the saw wave. You have standard pitch modulation as well. In this case, again, LFO1. You have glide control in each os oscillator. level of each oscillator separately. This has the mixer part of it as well. You can clip the, mod the waveform a little bit by going into 100% or as you add in extra oscillators there's a soft clipping uh, circuit just before the filter. There's also fine tune as well which goes down by a sense. One semitone up and you can control by major pitch by semitones itself. It tells you how many semitones you are. Each oscillator also has its own sub-oscillator, thus the name Otava, which means octaves. And you can have one or two octaves down on each oscillator, independent. You also have two different forms of waveforms. You can have a smooth or a square wave. So there's the smooth wave. You can adjust its volume. There's the square. Goes to two octaves down, smooth. Do that in both. So let's open up the second oscillator. And I have two oscillators. Each one has its own independent control over waveform and volume. Turn on each sub oscillator. And you can get quite a lot going on just with that. There's also hard sync. Between oscillator one and two, uh, oscillator two gets hard sunk to oscillator one. You press this button and hard sync turns on. Everything you do on the front panel 
is shown in here. So if I were to move the wave level, it tells me the level that I'm at in percentage. If I were to adjust the pitch, it tells me the pitch in semitones. If I adjust the waveform, it tells me that. So it always gives me in approximately the type of thing that I would care about. Like in here, it's in cents, zero to 100%, both directions. You can see the knobs with the dots on them. Those are all modulations. They have modulation source selectors down at the bottom. So if I want to see what modulation source is on wave mod for oscillator two, I just press it, it tells me it's LFO one. If I want to adjust it, I just rotate this knob here, change it. Let's set back to LFO one. It tells me OS2 shape. All right, so that's the basic oscillators. You can go on and put it into a ring modulator mode. Let me go ahead and do that. First thing I'll do is I will turn off the levels of each of the oscillator outputs so that you don't hear them. And now you'll hear is the ring modulator. Ring modulator has three forms as the bells. sub-oscillator, so you're hearing those a little bit. There we go. Everything's off now. And you can also adjust the noise. Let's turn on some noise. Noise has its own volume. It also has color. And you can modulate that color. So that's a quick cover of the oscillator. Let's go back and get some oscillation back in here again. Get sawtooth, just straight sawtooth wave again, and move on to the filter. Again, this is a four pole cascade filter, typical 24 dB low pass filter. It has two modulation sources. In this case, I have envelope two and LFO one going in. Has resonance full all the way into uh, self-oscillation. No resonance right now. Cutoff frequency is at full. The range is from about zero, D, zero hertz up to about 19 kilohertz on the cutoff frequency. follow. Set the key follow up. And set the key follow up to get that to track properly. And it tracks pretty well over about a five octave range. Okay. Let's get that resonance down to something more usable. Ah, got to turn on an oscillator. Turn on an oscillator to get a source going in. <laughs> and if I get tired of doing it on the keyboard, I've got a little trigger button here if I can do it. So I have two modulation sources. Um, that's obviously um, envelope two. Let's check it out. Yes, it is envelope two. You can do a 
really quickly too. Oh, it's a fast game here. Can set it for looping. It also has, each envelope has a, a delay feature in the beginning. That's adjustable. You can also set it up to have a hold so that it holds the attack. And you can also add a second modulation into the filter. Let's turn that back off the gate. So this one is LFO one. LFO number one can go up to about a hundred hertz. So we look at the ADSRs, a couple other features you saw looping. You can change it so that it has a soft reset. And what that does is, is as I play, it doesn't go back all the way to zero. On a soft reset, it goes back to the level that it's, that it's at and starts the attack phase over again. And so you don't get it all if you go to zero. If you want it to go all the way to zero and get that kind of a, a hard start over, you can set it to hard retrigger and you'll hear the difference. sometimes comes in very useful. Um, on the LFO side, you have the eight waveforms. You also have uh, rate modulation, so you can actually modulate the rate of the LFOs. You can actually modulate the rate of the LFO with other LFOs or with ADSRs or with the modulation wheel. There's a variety of ways that you can do that. Um, you can also set the LFOs so that they are free running, such as it is now. And let's just take a listen to that over here. Pitch modulation. Ramping up and ramping down. Square waves. Trying the waves. So that's free running. You can also sync it to the keyboard. So, so it always starts out at the beginning of the waveform. You can also set it so it does once every cycle, one cycle only. And you can do it so that if you want it to re-trigger, you can. So with that combination, you can actually set up the LFOs to be kind of like AR generators. You can actually set up the envelope generators to be like LFOs. So you can have eight basically LFOs, or you could have eight envelope generators. Across the bottom here is how you select the sources. So you've got um, four sources for the LFOs. You have uh, two sources for the VCA. Um, you have two sources for the filter. You have um, a source for each oscillator for the waveform, a source for each oscillator for the pitch modulation, and also the noise modulation has pitch and volume modulation. So they're all selected here at the bottom. You can recall and save patches through the menu. Just go to patches, select on something, pick the patch that you want, press on it. You can also put them to quick buttons on here, and I've done a couple of those already. Kick drum. And so 
it's a very easy system. The nice thing about it is what you find and what you love, you can also store away. And this is not your zero to 127 storage. Uh, this is zero to 4,096. So every knob is converted by 12-bit A to D converters before it is stored. So the accuracy is much higher than um, what you get through just you know your standard CCs. It does respond to uh, MIDI CC. It also obviously responds to pitch bend after touch modulation. And you also have over here your CV pedal input. You can put a CV uh, pedal into it, basically resistor, or you can actually put a zero to five volt signal into it and use that as a separate modulation. Altogether, there are 21 modulation capabilities, including the math functions that allow you to min, max, multiply, add, subtract, quantize, lag, um, or contour any of the envelopes or LFOs, keyboard pitch, modulation wheel, any of that stuff is also mathematically controlled and you can use those as modulations as well. Very handy for connecting the modulation wheel to say an LFO output, multiplying them together. That way the modulation wheel controls say vibrato depth. So there you have it, a very quick overview of the Artisan Electronic Instruments Otava Desktop Synthesizer. They are available now on our website, www.artisanelectronicinstruments.com and they're selling for $649 in two versions. Uh, this is the white uh, atomic version. We also have the black face Baroque version, which comes in a um, stained wooden case. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoy.